Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your weekend. Yes, Friday, October 18th through Sunday, October 20th. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. Uh, and I hope you're, look f you're looking forward to the weekend. I hope you have the chance to have a nice relaxing weekend. Maybe take some time for yourself at some point through your crazy, hectic, busy lives. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope you guys had a great week and I hope you have a great weekend ahead, yes? Let's just get straight into our pre-shuffle energies. <clears throat> the, so the card that came out is the devil and he's facing us right up all up in our faces. That's kind of, yeah, it feels like the devil is all up in our faces right now. Um, there's fear, there's illusion, there's attachment. There's, there's a feelings, I'm, it's a feeling of confinement, feeling of being chained for sure. Um, I know I'm personally going through that right now. It's so funny. Um, I, I, it's interesting because I was, <clears throat> I made the mistake of checking my email this morning when I woke up before I sat down and started doing this reading here. And I have an email from Sally Mae talking about, you know, how when like the student loan situation, like when that's all, when the, the bigger payments are going to kick in. It's not for a few more months, but it's like, holy moly, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. You know what I mean? Um, so when this came out this morning, when this is the, this is just the pre-shuffle energy and it took me a minute. I had to really like sit down and really, really work pretty hard to get my mind clear, to get connected with the collective and all that. And when this came out, I sat here for a second and I was like, oh boy, um, I don't, I don't, I, I, I think this message is for me, but then spirit kept saying to me, no, it's not just for you, Eric. This is a collective message. So I already, I'm already gathering what I, what the, the little experience I had this morning is quite indicative of what a lot of us are feeling right now. Now, it doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're facing, you know, student loan debt collection, um, although you might be, you know, but this could be really anything. There's the, the biggest thing here, especially with, here we go, especially with um, the overall energy of the King of Wands in which he's facing us right now, very confident, very sure of himself. On the other side, you have the Three of Cups. And so what Spirit is saying <clears throat> through this right now is you have the confidence, the strength, the wherewithal, the ability, the creativity, whatever. You have what it takes to overcome whatever this is. All right, fear is just an illusion, all right? The devil is really just here trying to make you feel like you're chained to him, trying to make you feel like you're you're confined to a certain way of being or a certain way of doing something or a certain course of action or a certain life trajectory or a certain career or this, that, whatever, in order to control you, in order to keep you within his clutches, in order to keep you, again, under control. Contr under control is the main theme here for the collective energy, this collective message, okay? So however that resonates for you or however that's representing itself in your life, it's really basically under along the lines of control and even conformity in some cases, okay? I just heard you have the power to do whatever it is you need to do in this world without question. All right, so it's really funny because I sat here for a second and I was thinking, wow, should I really, should I really put this out there? Should I reshuffle? There's like, no, this is your message too, but keep it for the collective. So, okay, all right. So whatever you're facing, you have the wherewithal to get through it. There's no question about that. And there's no doubt about that. Okay. And there's almost... And in looking at this devil energy and picking up on kind of like the point of view of this energy here, it's almost as if this energy wants you to wants you to stay in their control because that way you don't you're not starting to realize or get the idea that you really can do anything. In some cases, for some of you, this this is almost like a last ditch effort for the collective. And you know, now that I think about it, 
I'm sorry, not the collective, for this devil energy. It's a last ditch effort to like keep you in chains or keep you confined. And now that I really think about it, I'm glad that I didn't reshuffle this. Um, and I'm glad I put, I put this in because I'm looking back on the readings that I have been doing over the week through happy hour, um, uh, personal private readings outside of happy hour, even the collective reading for Instagram on Wednesday and all that stuff, it's falling right in line because many of us are in this energy of, holy shit, what do we do now? Like, what what's going to happen now? How do we get through this? How do I, uh, how, how do I, uh, what, how do I even go about this? You know, that kind of energy. So... You have, I mean, this is what you're facing right now. The, the devil is in front of you right now. And this is just like fear and illusion and control and conformity. But the overall energy of the situation is King of Cups. I'm sorry, King of Wands, Three of Cups. Okay, Three of Cups being a union, the, body, uh, the union of body, mind, and spirit. This is the pieces of you, the, the larger chunks, the core chunks of you that make you the being that you are, right, that, that make up the entity that you are, body, mind, and spirit, coming in together, finding that union, finding that balance. Also, gratitude, okay? The Three of Cups is very much about, especially in this deck, it really gives that feel, but um, gratitude is, or, yeah, Three of Cups is very much about gratitude. So remain grateful, remain humble, remain in your gratitude and your, and all that, and stay in alignment stay in the flow you know make sure you're staying happy make sure you're staying you're doing the best that you can to not be stressed out or to not allow yourself to get too stressed out to to stay with it to stay focused to stay grounded to stay balanced to stay aware of who you are and what you're actually capable of rather than what the devil would like you to believe yes okay so with all of that said let's get into the the rest of the message for today. All right. I'll give this one more shuffle here. Okie dokie. Here we go. Coffee first. <laughs> Okie dokie. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, October 18th through Sunday, October 20th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this five shuffles. And then we'll see what we've got for our weekend. For the collective, Friday, October 18th through Sunday, October 20th. Three for the collective. Four. For the collective. And this is five. All right, guys, here we go. Best messages, please, spirit. One more shuffle, they're saying. One more, okay. We have some interesting energy so far. That's enough there. All right, cool. All right, overall energy, ooh, okay. Overall energy, we have the Knight of Swords with the Eight of Wands. Okay. Looking here, we have the Hanged Man in reverse with the hermit 
and the Eight of Pentacles. The Hermit and the Eight of Pentacles are upright. The Hanged Man is reversed, though. We also have the Five of Swords, the Eight of Swords, and the Ace of Swords. Very interesting energy. This is, very, this is really quite troubling. I'm not going to lie. Um, and it's troubling only in the sense of there's, a, there's, a, there's almost a sense of panic. <laughs> we were just talking about that, weren't we? There's almost a sense of panic here. It's troubling only in terms of recognizing what you need to be breaking free from. What was this? The Eight of Wands. Yeah, there's there's a sense of urgency. There's almost, almost, almost a sense of panic here. And I guess maybe panic isn't the right word. Frantic. Something feels frantic. Let's see. The Hanged Man in reverse with the Hermit and the Eight of Pentacles. This is good. This right here is good. Because what this feels like is someone is coming out of some sort of confinement, uh, definitely conformity. I just heard that. But also in this deck, look, keep in mind you have this other side of the hanged man in which we have the two individuals that were being indoctrinated by the Hierophant previously earlier in the in the major arcana right because the hierophant is number five the the hanged man it is 12 this is 12 yes this is 12 <coughs> excuse me oh gosh why am i wheezing like that um anyway so i'm definitely getting a sense of conformity here but it's it's someone that's coming out of that it's it's coming out of a certain way of thinking and it has to do with and you're coming out of this having having realized or recognized your own identity um the feeling that I'm getting from this hanged man in reverse with the hermit upright is it feels like you're you're literally going in your own direction. And it's so crazy because and, and this this is I'm going to be I'm going to be complete completely honest with you guys full disclosure. This is one of those moments where me being a reader for the collective um, I get a little nervous and I, I, I get a little concerned because it, this feels literally exactly what's going on in my life right now, personally speaking. So, and it's not that I don't really want, it's not that I'm trying to keep, you know, my life all that private. This is something that as the type of person that I am, I would want to share this with people to help them, you know, if you're going through the same thing or to help if you're going through something similar or you've been through something similar to, to you know, so that we can help, we can relate to each other. But this is one of those moments where I kind of get concerned and I'm like, is this, is this a collective reading or is this a personal reading, Eric? Um, and it makes sense that it might be a personal, personal reading because many of you have said, you know, in watching Morning Coffee regularly, some many of you have found that every once in a while there is something that's so specific to your situation that it feels like a personal reading. For me, I feel like that gets a little bit dicey because I am the reader here, right? But anyway, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, and I guess I'll say it this way because this is how it's relating to my life, so maybe you'll understand. But I'm seeing the hanged man as a situation. A, a, a conformist, for lack of a better term, a conformist type situation. And it's not that bad. It's more of just like a societal norm. And it's, it doesn't feel like it's something that's really all that bad. And yet it it is detrimental because it's not something that's authentic to you. It's just something that society would lead you believe to believe is necessary for you to succeed, right? I.e., you know what? I'm not going to go there. Anyway, but um, that's what this is feeling like. So in my situation, I'm dealing right now with trying to figure out how I'm going to pay back my the loans that I took out for school while I was in this while I was in this training program, this school. I came to realize there that there there are certain elements to the business I was I was studying and certain elements to the field that I was looking at that I don't necessarily want to be a part of. And that's a lot of, 
that is really hard to deal with. It's been hard to deal with because I've been kind of dealing with that over the last few months and it's a product of me kind of like my awakening, I guess. Um, recognizing that I don't want to be part of a toxic work environment. I don't want to be working so much that I don't have a life that I can't live, that I can't breathe, that I can't like take, have a moment to myself. I don't want to, I don't necessarily, I, 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 I basically, I want to go in my own direction. And it's me having come out of this confinement with the hanged man, because that's how I'm seeing the hanged man energy right now. So collectively speaking, this is what the hanged man, at least for this message, this is what the hanged man is representing next to, in reverse, next to the hermit. Following your own light, going in your own direction, having gone through a change in perspective, having gone through an enlightenment period, because the, the, the hanged man represents change in perspective and enlightenment. So having gone, and, 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 and I'm, and, this is, this, is not, uh, this is not to say that, you know, the enlightenment that you, are, you are, that, you, that you are experiencing in contrast to what you were dealing with in the past, it does, it's, I'm not, this is not saying that this is any better or worse than what, was, what you were dealing with in the past. This is just what is more authentic to you. Okay, I want to make that clear. I'm not trying to say that any one thing is better or any one path is better than the other. If going on, if you're if following the beaten path is right for you, is what is fulfilling you, is the least path of least resistance for you, is getting you where you want to go, then by all means, follow that. This is more about what is truly authentic to you, what is best for you here, right? Okay. With that said, that's coupled with the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, craftsmanship. Doing the work, crafting the work. And it's the side of the Eight of Pentacles where there's, this, where there's a young child here. And in the past, when this card, this side of the card has come out, we were t I was saying that this is feeling like you're working in tandem with your inner child. But also, this could be... This gentleman is teaching uh, an apprentice here. So it's almost as, wow, wow. There's definitely an energy of influencing younger generations here for some of you. For others of you, this is uh, working in tandem with your inner child and it's, par and it's partially <laughs> This realization, I know for me, this realization has a lot to do with reconnecting with my inner child and desiring to be happy and desiring to, yes, to work. It's not like I don't want to work, but I also, I don't want to kill myself working, you know? That's very interesting. On the other side, however, we have the Five of Swords, the Eight of Swords, and the Ace of Swords. <clears throat> Interesting. So this is like an, a, 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 a zoomed in or a, a deeper focused view of what this energy is. Because, it, because I, the Five of Swords came out already. Did it, it came out this past week. Was it yesterday? I don't remember. But it was this same side where someone is walking away from a battle. Someone is walking away from extreme competition, from... Um, backstabbing, one-upmanship, toxic relationships, toxic environments, lose-lose situations. Destructive, just destructive energies all around. You're walking away from, uh, well, you're walking away from the battle and, it's, and you also have the Eight of Swords, so there is a realization of some sort of confinement here, okay? But with the Ace of Swords on that, it's that's where the realization is coming in. And this is, and it's, it, you're realizing that you're fighting a losing battle or you're confined here and it's destructive, not just for you, but for others. This is very much an energy of, on a collective scale, this is very much an energy of breaking a pattern, recognizing the confinement here, rep, 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 recognizing the mental prison, okay, that you may be in or some sort of prison that you may be in and, and recognizing the destructiveness, the competition, the backstabbing, the cheating, the lighting, the stealing, the lose-lose energy and walking away from it. Five of Swords, 
is, is walking away. Ace of Swords is the realization. Changing the narrative, changing the story, changing the game. And this does absolutely have an influence or it will have an influence on younger generations, especially if you have children that are around you frequently regularly i feel like there are some there are some individuals out here in the collective that are having a direct effect on the children around them or the younger generation around them but this would be in a positive way and this is in a positive way in the sense that you're giving younger generations a view into a different way of doing things a model into being authentic and following your own heart, your own guidance, your own intuition, your own passions, and going in your own direction. This could have a very, very positive effect on the de developing mind of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a child, of a young individual, of a young adult even. The only thing that really kind of troubles me is the Knight of Swords with this eight of wands energy this just there's just something very frantic about this and the knight of swords is a can be a pretty volatile energy okay it can be very shoot first ask questions later i'm wondering if it's because it does it does feel a little more of an offensive than i'm sorry a defensive energy than an offensive energy maybe i just uh, yeah it does feel like more of an offensive energy And then with the Eight of Wands, it's almost as if there's a fire being lit under your ass or something like that. You know what I mean? That's where the franticness is coming through here. But this does, this Knight of Swords does feel like a defensive energy. And it does feel like you're charging into battle. Um, it feels like you're charging into battle. But it's what I'm hearing. It's like, you know what you have to do here. You know, you know. You, what you have to defend, you know you have to fight for yourself in some way, it, it does. It feels very, very defensive rather than offensive, which in, my, which in my opinion is good, is better than it being offensive. Okay, I wanna get a little more clarity onto the energies here and I'm not gonna pull anything specific. What I wanna do is I just wanna stick in between, I wanna stay in the middle of these two energies here or these two definitions here, whatever, and um, get a little more clarity on this. Okay, one last shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got. Just want a little greater clarity on this for us here on these energies so let's look a little deeper let's look a little deeper here what is that okay well that's the king of pentacles so far where there's something else under it with the ten of swords Ooh, and the lovers at the bottom of the deck Okay, well, this is this is a really a reassuring sign here, a very very reassuring sign. Um, the lovers being at the bottom of the deck is talking about working in. Oh, ooh, I just heard working in tandem. This is union within, especially with this three of cups here. This is what we. No, 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 no. The three of cups was not here. The three of cups was in the overall energy. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, the pre-shuffle energy. This is the eight of wands. But the three of cups was here at the beginning of the reading, at the bottom of the deck, um, overall energy. And it was talking about the union of body, mind, and spirit. And here we have that representation officially with the lovers, the union within. And that's what I'm hearing. This is a union within that is bringing you into greater manifestation Okay, the King of Pentacles is representing being very well manifested, very well grounded, financially stable, financially abundant, financially able with the Ten of Swords. 
And this Ten of Swords energy is super relieving because what I got from this Ten of Swords just now is that you're finally free of all of this. At least mentally. And that's what this is representing here. Ace of Swords, Eight of Swords. You have the knowledge to cut yourself free. You have the realization to cut yourself free. Although, however, it is a bit of a darker scene with the, with the Ace of Swords. So you maybe are not quite all fully aware of the process to do so, but you have the wherewithal. I mean, you have this eagle here flying with this wreath. You know what? No, I don't have it. I have, I have to dig into my closet to get it. Okay, never mind. I was going to look deeper into that, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. This feels like freedom. And actually, okay, actually, this does kind of look, it is a little bit of a, a maybe a, a bit of a nighttime scene, but um, you can also see this as like a dawn, the dawning of a new day, the dawning of a new realization even, right? King of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. I mean, the worst is behind you. You have the knowledge that you need now to move in this new direction to follow your own guidance, to follow your own inner light. And that's really, and what I'm feeling like here is, it really, what, all that was really necessary was for you to realize the true power that you hold. That's literally all this lesson was. That's what I just picked up on. That was literally what this, les this lesson was. For you to realize the power, the true power of manifesting that you hold. And it seems that you've realized it now or you're in a place of realizing it. You're, come, you're, you're, you're out of the Ten of Swords, done. Worst is behind you. Now it's just a matter, in some cases, now it's just a matter of cleaning up the mess and that's, that's not gonna be difficult at all. And I, and I say mess lightly, mess, uh, no, I take, that, take that lightly, okay? For lack of a better term. So now with all of that said then, yeah, okay, cool. With all that said, I want to look into what Spirit has to say about this. Okay. Spirit's advice, and then... Actually, Oracle Guidance. And what's funny... Oh, well, we'll talk about it in a second. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, right now, let's just get Spirit's Guidance here for this. Oh, damn. You got the fool. You've got the fool right here. Overall energy of the Six of Wands. Wow. The Six of Wands and the Hermit is right below that. Holy moly. You have the fool with the Queen of Wands and the Page of Wands and also the Four of Swords. Okay. Again, we have the balance of masculine and feminine energy. Well, we have a balance of masculine and feminine energy. So what Spirit is saying here, I'm sorry, we have a potential balance, all right? Because your energy is saying that you're here in this King of Pentacles state, right? Spirit is saying, take a leap of faith, utilizing the Queen of Wands energy or the feminine energy or the laws of attraction or uh, mag magnetism, right? Page of Wands. Here, the Page of Wands, the Page of Wands could be talking about self-discovery. And actually it is, but not as much. So, okay, what I mean by this is, in my opinion, the Page of Wands is a minor arcana version of the Hermit, which we have twice here. Hermit's right here, and it's also right here. What Spirit is saying through this is 
utilize this period of self-discovery that you've gone through, this new discovery that you found of yourself, this deeper understanding of yourself to move forward. But also what Spirit is saying here is through this page of wands, as Spirit is indicating a new creative direction. That is going, that, that, I mean, you have the success here, Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is coming, is represent, is, is, is here because of this period of self-discovery that you've gone through. This deeper understanding of yourself that you've come to. You now see something quite clearer. And you're able, you're at the precipice, you're about to take a leap of faith here. You're about to go in a brand new direction. But right now, you need to just relax. Meditate as often as you can. Try to keep yourself in that flowing energy. Meditation is the antidote to this Knight of Swords energy. I get it. Now I understand what this Knight of Swords is, especially with the Eight of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Or I'm, I'm sorry, on the other side of the deck. There is, a, there is this feeling, and this is why it felt so frantic. There's this feeling of needing to take action now, needing to go and do and do something about something right this hot second. But that's not necessary. You probably can't even really do anything about it right now. And if you were to try to rush in to force something to happen right now, you're probably only gonna make things worse. Very shoot first, ask questions later type energy. Okay, that's what I'm feeling, but that's why it was feeling so frantic. And what Spirit is saying here is hold your horses. Just chill for a second. Four of Swords, just chill for a second. Pull back, remove yourself from the drama, remove yourself from the battle, remove yourself from the aggressiveness, remove yourself from the sense of urgency. Sit down, meditate, figure out how you're going to work through this. Figure Because the Four of Swords is very much about removing yourself from the battle, taking a break, and reassessing your battle plan. Right? The Queen of Wands energy reminds you that you have what it takes to, to get through this. The Queen of Wands, in my opinion, is, a, is, a, is the physical embodiment of the law of attraction at work because the Queen of Wands represents that magnetism. All of the queens represents receptivity in a sense because that that's what feminine energy is. But the Queen of Wands specifically, in my opinion, is all about attraction, magnetizing what... what being that magnetic energy, sitting in that magnetic energy, okay? This is really good, though, you guys. This is very, very good. Spirit is saying the victory is coming. Six of Wands. The victory is here because you know yourself better now. There's greater authenticity here. Especially with the Page of Wands and the Queen of Wands, there is, <clears throat> there is, in fact, greater authenticity here. Okay, this is good. All right, so now Oracle Guidance. It's interesting. Yesterday, um, I was rummaging around in my closet because I was doing a personal reading for someone, and so I had to get out a certain, I had to get out certain cards. So I was going through my closet, and um, one of the decks fell out, and it was the Light Worker Oracle. And when it fell out, I was like, "Oh, you guys want to? You guys have something to say, don't you?" And they was like, "Yep, we sure do." So then this morning, when I was getting ready for this reading today, I was like, huh, maybe I should bring this deck out and see if they want to play with us. And they sure do. So our Oracle guidance for the weekend is going to come from the Lightworker Oracle. And it couldn't be any more poignant because of the fact that we have this hermit energy, um, this energy of individuality <clears throat> and trailblazing and whatnot. We have that coming through. So this is perfect. So, Oracle deck, Oracle guidance is coming from the Lightworker Oracle. Last shuffle here for our Oracle guidance for the weekend. Here we go. Best message, please, spirit. 
Ooh, there it is. Card number 33. Wow, Master Healing. That is a master number, card number 33. I'm going to be 33 next year. <laughs> mm. Or this coming year. That's fun. All right. Master Healing. As you meditate, remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path, you become an increasingly powerful healer. You are here to live your own life, to be true to what genuinely moves you. The unconditionally loving guide and ascended master Serapis Bay comes to you now with a blessing of master healing to further your success on your path. So perfect. <laughs> I love it. I just want to read this. So I'm going to do it. The Master Serapis Bay is a beloved guide for those who feel a strong soul connection to ancient Egypt, for, e for healers who are developing their own modalities, and those who love to work with high frequency concepts. He also assists with the translation of spiritual inspiration into practical worldly plans. He comes to confirm that the Ascended Masters are aware of you. You are an integral part of a powerful spiritual team that has taken physical incarnation to help awaken consciousness into love. You are asked to tune into your heart. What do you love enough to overcome any obstacle to attain it? What motivates and inspires you? Not what seems possible or practical, but what is authentic. We are most powerful when we serve authentically from the heart. A bird might learn how to dive underwater from time to time, but it is never going to be at its most powerful if it has to live underwater. It would struggle to thrive if it were to force itself into such unnatural expressions of its life energy. The bird yearns to fly because that is its divine nature and purpose. You too have divine nature and purpose and your heart holds the clue. What feels most like you? Oh my God, this is, you guys, this is literally what I was talking about throughout this whole reading. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read more. It is difficult to access the truth of our own nature when we believe we should live up to the expectations of others. If we are attached to an outcome or afraid of an answer, we can unintentionally block our perceptive faculties, a spiritual version of sticking our fingers in our ears and shouting blah, blah, blah. The blessing of Serapis Bay includes his clear flame of divine cleansing light. This can assist us in letting go of whatever blocks us from knowing the truth of our nature. When we are willing to be who we are, the universe can more easily guide us to fulfill our destinies. Serapis Bay will help you see yourself truthfully. You may gain feedback from others that helps you understand the value of what you share. Or you may simply find it easier to view yourself objectively with a compassionate, appreciative, and discerning inner eye. As you learn to accept who you are, you become a more powerful vibration for masters to put to use in plan of in the plan of love. If you have a dream in your heart, know that it will be that it has been placed there for a divine purpose. What you dream and desire contains the seed of divinity. It is meant to help attract your life mission and fulfill it with love, joy, creativity, and pleasure. If we are willing to go through what is necessary for an outcome, it will happen for us. The details may appear different from what we imagined they would, but the truth remains. If you ask yourself, I'm sorry, if you ask for something and are willing to go through the process required to have that come to life, it will happen for you. The universe is that generous, unconditionally supportive, and loving of you. It is your creative partner. It will provide you with all that you need to manifest your dreams, desires, and destiny. That couldn't have been any more perfect. So if you are one of the lucky few that has made it through the whole reading and listened to that Oracle guidance, congratulations, you made it. <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee on Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!